Hello, welcome to Fictional Narrative. I'm Neri, and it's Cozy Saturday. But it's not just any Cozy Saturday, because see, usually Cozy Saturdays involve me talking about a new cozy mystery universe that I've just delved into. But in this one, I'm doing a follow-up. And the series that I'm talking about is A Tita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery by Mia P. Manansala. And the first book was Arsenic and Adobo, and I read that in the beginning of the year, and I said I would follow up on it, and I really couldn't think of, like, what is the best way to format a follow-up? Right now, there are only four books in the series. I'm pretty well caught up, so I can kind of, like, go through them and give you my perspective on how the series has developed thus far, and I'm really excited to do it. So the basic premise of the series is Lila Makapagal has moved back to Shady Palms, her hometown from Chicago, after a breakup with her fiancé, and now she's trying to find herself. She's also trying to heal from her past and reconcile her present and those who she thought she left behind but then are again in her life. We see her in book one, Arsenic and Adobo, which I rated four out of five stars, and she's working in her Tita Rosie's kitchen, her Aunt Rosie's kitchen, and there is a little bit of tension where she's this baker who creates fusion desserts, and her aunt is really, really traditional, and so she feels like her creativity is being stifled. She compares it to when she was in her in Chicago, and her fiancé, who was a chef, would steal her idea. And then she meets up with her ex-boyfriend, and he dies in the restaurant. So they have to shut down. So not only does she have to solve that mystery to support Tita Rosie, but she's the main suspect. And our detective in this story is Detective Park, who also comes from out of town. Well, technically Lila didn't come, f Lila didn't come from out of town, but the detective is from out of town, and he's more qualified than the whole police force to find the killer. But he's fixated on Lila. But here's the other thing about Detective Park, right? He has a brother named Jay, and Jay is a dentist. And Jay and Lila have a thing. Detective Park and Tito Rosi kind of have a thing. So Tito Rosi is like, you know, Jonathan, please help me. Please figure this out. Jonathan is Detective Park's name, and the reason I'm going to address him as Detective Park the rest of the video is because when your name is Jonathan and your brother's name is Jay, which might as well be a nickname for your name, that's going to be confusing. Our first book does kind of end on a love triangle with Amir, who is Lila's childhood friend and her best friend's brother. Her best friend is Adina. I thought it was kind of cute, but also a little too contentious for me to get for them to be together. I thought Jay was really cute, so I was hoping that he and Lila would be a thing. Anyway, obviously Lila is not the killer because if she was, that would be the end of the series, unless the rest of the series is her on the run, uh, which should be interesting, but probably not as cozy. In book two, called Homicide and Hollow Hollow. Lila is asked to become a judge in the Miss Shady Palms beauty pageant. And this is something that is tradition in this town. However, the two, well, one of them is a judge, the other one is not a judge. There is a family that typically is backing the beauty pageant. And several years back, they had a tragedy unrelated to the mystery that's going on in the book. And so after some time, now the children have come back to back the pageant, but the daughter of the family wants to make changes so that it's not basically just a misogynistic type of pageant. And there is a lot of different activities that are based in giving back to the community. A lot of the the type of scoring that they do for the beauty pageant is volunteer work. And they test the girls in terms of how do they answer in a respectful manner? Do they, what are their goals? Are they intellectually inclined? How would they use this 
role as the winner of the beauty pageant to represent the town. How will they give back, etc. Even the talent portion is expanded so that the girls can showcase many different talents instead of just your basic. And they did away with the swimsuit contest. Thank gosh. The, the contestants are middle school and high school age. You don't need you don't need a bathing suit competition for these kids. Okay. So Lila agrees. And of course, the daughter of the family is also like, I want to promote more women of color. Um, unfortunately, she's white, so it's more in a token way. But she she has good intentions. But in in the book, it's recognized as in a in a token way is the way that she she says it. She wants to promote women of color who are entrepreneurs within the town because that will inspire the girls in the beauty pageant. Okay, the brother of this family, the son, whatever. He's one of the head judges, and one day he dies. Who is the suspect? Bernadette, Lila's cousin. Not really her cousin, but they kind of grew up together so close that they call each other cousins. And this book, for me, oh my gosh, it was so good. Okay, it was more of like a first book than the first book was a first book. Like it made the first book look like a prequel. This this book was so strong on its own. It talks about different coping mechanisms. It talks about, you know, Detective Park being like, hey, Lila, you should get therapy because you have gone through a lot. You may not feel like you have gone through a lot, but you've absolutely gone through a lot. You need to take care of yourself. Other people around her also say, you need to take care of yourself. And she doesn't recognize it until one day she has like a panic attack because of the PTSD that she has from her encounter in book one. Yes, but I mean, I'm not saying book one's not important, but I'm saying book two is pivotal to the series to the point where it's like, if you're going to pick up any book from the series, pick up this book. Not only is it the strongest link to all of the rest of the books, which yeah, as a cozy mystery, you can kind of pick up any single one of them and read it as a one-off and they'll explain it to you. But like if book one is your hole in the ground, you know, that you like made nice and even, book two is the cement. Like it is so good. It is your, it could absolutely be your foundation. So if there is absolutely a standout book in this series, it is book two. And not only that, we get to see how much of a sweetheart Jay is, what kind of competition Lila has, how does she react to things, how does she go about investigating things and build her support network, her support network, which is so important because if she's going to continue solving mysteries, she's going to need that support network that is not just her best friend, not just her family, not just the calendar crew. I don't know if I've mentioned the calendar. The calendar crew is called the calendar crew because they are Lila's godmothers, but their names are April, May, and June. And so they're older and they're kind of gossipy. They know everything that there is to know about everyone. And they've made a few enemies over that, but we will get to it. Anyway, book two is amazing. It also ends pretty tragically, but it does show that despite all odds and for a good purpose, women can still continue to lift each other up and also be a mentor to, you know, the girls that are in the beauty pageant or in their lives. Like, it is just so good. Book three was a four out of five for me. It's called The Blackmail and Mabinka. This one deals with Tita Rosie's son coming back into the picture after 15 years. He's come back to town, just blew in on the winds of a new business. And since his cousin is a business owner, in book two, Lila has officially opened her cafe with Adina and Elena, Adina's girlfriend. And his mom owns a business, so it looks like an entrepreneurial family. He's trying to get some investors. And so he comes in 
and he's, you know, getting his family to greet them and everything like that. Well, one of his investors dies. And there is plenty of motivation for different people to have killed her. I will say this book didn't grip me as much as the second book did, but the introduction of Ronnie, Lila's cousin, and because it was always a mystery why he left, bridging that gap was definitely interesting to me. And also because he had to deal with Detective Park and Tito Rosie, which means that now we get a definitive answer on what their relationship is. Yes, Tito Rosie and Detective Park have an age gap. I don't know how big it is, but Detective Park is 45 years old. He's a grown man. If he would like to pursue an older woman, that's perfectly fine. I know you're going to have questions about these age, gap age gaps, okay? If Detective Park is 45, how old is his brother, Jay? Well, they have a 15-year difference. Jay is 30, and then Lila is 25. So, Lila and Jay are closer in age. And then Detective Park is like 20 years older than Lila and 15 years older than his brother. Ronnie is uncomfortable with the fact that like his mom has this new boyfriend and mentions at some point that like she's still married. But it's like your dad left your family a long time ago. I don't, I don't know if we would still consider that a relationship to have to be honored. I understand, and, and Lila's even like, yeah, you're upset that your mom has a new beau, but guess what? You were gone for 15 years. So what? She needed support and Detective Park supports her and cares for her. It's literally like her son waltzed in and expected everything to just fall into place for him. And in that sense, I was really upset with Ronnie's behavior. But at the same time, I knew that if he's going to behave this way, he's the red herring, not the killer. The, there are multiple like bad people in this story and they all like to monologue. It didn't take away from my enjoyment, but I feel like whenever there's an evil villain monologue, I still have to point out that there's an evil villain monologue. Book four. This one is the most recent one. It's called Murder and Maman, and it is a five out of five. Like, you can see this author is just going strong in the series. Four out of five, five out of five, four out of five, five out of five. Okay, so this one takes place during a time period in Shady Palms, well, working up to it and then through it, called Spring Cleaning, which is apparently an event where you spring clean. It's definitely a thing in the series. I've never heard it happening like in real life, but it's it's definitely a thing, right? In the series. The calendar crew have decided that they're going to open a laundromat during the spring cleaning event. And of course, that means that's a great time. A laundromat cleaning, great. However, Ninang April, um, that Ninang being the word for godmother, in the beginning of the book, there's kind of a glossary of terms. And I think I'm going to end up getting the ebook of the entire series as well as the um, audiobook because then I can hear how it's properly pronounced and follow along. And if I don't want to hear the narrator, I still can reread the stories. Anyway, Ninong April has her niece coming and supposedly her niece is a pretty troubled girl. Like there are rumors about her, but Lila is not plugged in enough to know what those rumors are. What she does know is she is being asked to show Ninang April's niece around when she comes. And that girl is going to work in their laundromat when it opens, and she's going to work getting it ready to be open. However, she doesn't make it to the opening. Unfortunately, she is our victim. I believe her name is Davina, and she went to one of the top art schools in the Philippines and she has her whole life ahead of her now snuffed out and of course Lila has to back up the calendar crew and figure it out but unfortunately it seems like the calendar crew might actually be the target because they know everything about everybody and let's say you know instead of reaching out to the person and saying, hey, I heard this, you might want to look into this, this, this is going around about you, like maybe privately talk to someone, they also then just gossip. 
And then they expect it to, like, be okay because they just told the truth. And if you don't want, you know, those consequences to come at you, then just live your life the right way. But that's not the reality of how people live. And it might be that their actions and their consequences have caught up to them. And it is harrowing. But also, the author's strong suit here is creating characters with this realistic drama coming back and explaining how they cope with him, how not to cope with them, how they've fallen because they can't deal with certain things. And it works so well. And the whole time I'm like, is it because Davina is like Gossip Girl and someone wanted to kill Gossip Girl? And I was hooked because what happened, how Lila went into this saying that I have to protect my family. I love it. She also got Jay into her shenanigans as well, and he was willing to, partly because he's worried about her and partly because he knows he can't stop her. Detective Park takes part as well, but his career hit a snag. So now he's starting a new one, and I am so happy for him. The author did also mention that there are jokes and I guess some people are scandalized or whatever that Lila is dating Jay and Tito Rosie is like dating Detective Park but it's not like that bad. Anyway some things that I am worried about for the future of this series. First of all Lila has her cafe with Adina and Elena but in book four, they're hiring some people, right? And she's, at one point, there's a character that approaches Lila for a part-time job, and she says, I can deliver. Now, a lot of stuff that Lila does involves catering and delivering, and it would take some of the weight off of her to do things. Adina and Elena are good for baking when it comes to certain things, but Adina apparently works best with items that you just pop in the oven. And so sometimes Lila finds herself swamped. The worst is when it comes to her detective work. I'm worried that eventually her load at the cafe will be so light that all she has is her detective work, which is, is great, but also not all of the passion that she has is just in detective work. I actually, I don't know if she has really any passion for detective work. I think it's just more like Lila is the one to trust. I do like Detective Park playing a bigger role in the book, the fourth book, and I want to see him play an even bigger role in the future and take the lead because he's the one with the background and the experience. I I'm also a little worried about Jay and Lila's relationship just because they're really great together, but also he's really worried about her all the time and like, please don't get yourself into trouble. And in the fourth book, he was like, try not to investigate because you're going to get yourself into trouble. You've been hurt in the past and I don't want you to be hurt again. And I totally get that. It's not going to stop her. It's not going to stop this series and it's not his fault that they are fictional characters in a cozy mystery setting that will always have to happen. But I want them to stay together. <laughs> and while book two, and another thing, while book two touched upon PTSD, panic attacks, how to deal and cope with these very, very serious things, I want to definitely see more of that. I don't want it to be a one and done in one book because now we have even more people that may be touched by that. And the great thing about this author is even characters that you think you are never going to see again, she brings them back. This is a life-changing event. This is how they change. This is how they're going to improve their lives. Absolutely. Like, she pulls that off 100%, so I'm hoping that I see more. I like it because it broadens knowledge and understanding and how to deal with different types of people and what they deal with and how they think. I, oh my god, this series is just so good at handling that. 
and I want to see more of it. I want to understand more of how Lila is getting through this because if she had a panic attack in book two, she's in a perilous position in book one, two, three, and four. I would like to learn more about how she's coping with it in addition to how it affects other people because there is conversation about that generational divide about the whole older generation the calendar crew when something bad happens they throw themselves into their work and it may not be for everyone and it may not be the most healthy way to cope and then there's someone like Bernadette who the same generation as Lila but she's kind of fitting into a more kind of fitting into that role that the the calendar crew or even Tita Rosie would be like, yes, you kind of have the same mindset. You throw yourself into your work. She even has a line where she says, when I learn emotional intelligence, it's over for you hoes. And I thought that was hilarious, but also I also want to see it happen. I love all of these characters, Ugh, even Ronnie. And I just want to see where the author takes them. I don't have a ranking on authors that I think handle character development well from the, the, the smallest role to the largest, but if I did, this author would definitely be at least top three because she handles it so well. I'm, I'm going to say that. If you pick up a book, if you, if you want to start, you haven't started the series yet, I do suggest book two first, foremost. But the series itself is worth reading, and I'm glad I'm all caught up. The fourth book came out September of this year, and I can't wait for the next installment already. So, And that concludes a very, very, very rambly, cozy Saturday. But this is turning out to be one of my favorite cozy mystery series, and I had to share. So if you have any cozies you would like me to take a look at, let me know. Otherwise... Follow me on my social media. I'm checking Instagram, even if I'm not posting on Instagram. So you could probably reach me there if you want to drop me a line. And I'll see you next time. Bye.